Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, I'm Mindful Nomad. For those who are new here, my name is Veronica. And on this channel, we talk about aviation, we talk about travel, tips, we do vlogs. And today's video makes me very happy because I'm actually doing a bit of a video podcast interview with one of my very good friends, Pedro, who was also Emirates Cabin Crew and is also a content creator now. But more than that, he's an artist and he became actually quite famous in the Emirates community about six years ago when he started his character, Allison, who was a cabin crew from Liverpool. It was hilarious. Hi love, it's Allison calling from ML4. Are you guys done with the service? Is there any meals left? I'm starving. And thanks to that, he was able to develop different artistic projects. I'm a dance for you, I'm a slave for you. Drop, drop and break it back. It's my lips, we're gonna get soiled. In today's video, we're going to be talking with Pedro about life after Emirates, what it means to be in Emirates, what it does to your head, the good things, the bad things, and the in-betweens. I hope you like it. Hi, how are you, Pedro? So happy to have you here. Pedro is one of my best friends and uh, we've known each other for quite a while. Um, so we actually did a video three years ago, I think it was when I lost my job with Emirates. Or do you remember? Yeah. We did a live uh, video. What that, was that during the pandemic? It was, it was during the, during the pandemic. But, yes, you, that's but right. you were still in, in Dubai though. No, I was back home for six months. Ah, uh, then I went back. It was during yeah. that period. Yeah, I remember that. But that one was in yeah. Spanish. Yeah. That one was in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, it was in Spanish. And it was all about Emirates as well, like we're going to do today. Yeah. But it was a different time because I was very self-conscious. I didn't want to talk about Emirates as much because I still had that little kind of like thing in my head that told me, like the voice that told me, you can't talk because you're going to get fired. And I, I was already fired. <laughs> so it just but no it's just sense. crazy. I think we and... mentioned that before, like the, the mentality, the mindset that we have after Emirates, like all these not sharing, not no. talking, not saying, because you can get reported. You can, uh, there are going to be a lot of consequences and everything. And that's the mindset that you are left with once you leave the company. But today we're going to flow. And I want you to ask was it all hard? the questions. I will ask all the questions this. And here's my first one. Was it hard for you? Because you're a content creator. You've been creating content for the past, I think it's been like five years or six or something six, like that. Six, six, yep. Yeah. So, and I, and just a little background, Pedro does, and I said this on in my intro, but he does um, music and he's performed. He's performed in Dubai. He's performed in all over Europe. So, um, but he your start was basically doing your Allison character. And that was basically taking a piss at Emirates crew. You even had like a cabin crew, like an Emirates yes. cabin crew hat. Was it hard for you to like, you know, kind of like take that off your mind and say, okay, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm going to be able to record these videos and it's fine. Or like, was it difficult? How was that for to you? To me, it was very easy. The problem was the people talking around because people kept messaging me like i never knew those videos were going to go viral because i already did allison videos without being allison back when i was crew i i remember doing videos with, uh, with my friend ale but thing is people yeah, people were texting me like oh the company's talking shit about you they're going to report you apparently i've heard that you're going to go to trial and i was like but what does that come from that's why i started doing videos with the hat then i removed the um the logo because i'm like if you if they want to get you in yeah. trouble they will get you in trouble but nothing ever happened to me like i was totally fine to me it was easy because i was just creating stuff and i'm like you know what even if they say something i can still change the uniform it's something that i'm going to create myself that's why i created ticket to here with for allison but it wasn't hard it just yeah. was more pressure towards the end because people were demanding a lot of videos, a lot of content, and it did and and it wasn't fun anymore. That's why I stopped because I was being threatened sometimes, and then um, it wasn't fun. And I don't know, I just got over it. I'm like, you know what? I think it's time for me to stop for now. 
because I didn't want to stop it because I loved it. Wait, hold up. What do you mean you were being threatened? By yes. like by who? <laughs> like random. There people, was just one trolls? guy who I actually flew with. He's from Liverpool actually, and he was uh, CSV. And he was like, you know what? Uh, we're going to report you to the company. You need to send me the name because I'll, I know I'll, a few. You okay. probably know him. <laughs> he was he was a troublemaker. <laughs> he was a troublemaker. Not threatening as if like, oh, we're going to kill you. But he was just like, um, you know, ju just talking shit about what I was doing, how shitty my character was. People saying that I wasn't uh, good enough anymore. That I w They were telling me, you are supposed to talk about these things that we're going through, you know, uh, during the pandemic. The, uh, they were like, you are supposed to make videos. Oh, that was yes they after. were like you, uh you need to talk okay. about this you're not entertaining us you are not being funny anymore you need to mention this i was like i don't have to mention nothing i'm doing this for fun and i'm doing this because i enjoy it <laughs> exactly you, you know me? the I'm brands sorry. that actually paid me <laughs> they were happy with uh with my content because you cannot force me to do something that I do for fun. And I don't have to talk about how the company is treating employees because I'm I'm no longer crew. So I don't have to talk about it. I, I just, I do this for fun. What do you mean? So they wanted you to advocate yeah. for them because here's the thing, like with Emirates, like you can't really advocate. And even if like people, you know this as well as me, like if you even liked a comment on a Facebook group of someone saying something negative about Emirates and it got, it made its way to a manager, you would be 100% right. fired or at least in very big trouble. So, I mean, I understand that they wanted you to say those things, but that wasn't the point. And just so you know, like I was, I was in um, Emirates at the time when he started the videos and he became super popular. Um, imagine like it's, it was around like 17,000 yeah. crew, I think, at the time. And everyone knew him. Every time he crazy. would put out a crazy. new video, you would come on board. And people were talking about it. Yeah. And and there were so many rumors, like, you know, that you got fired, that you were in trial, that like a bunch of different things that I heard. And I would sit there and go, Girl, like, I'm mm -hmm, telling like you, you know, like, you just let people my talk inbox, shit. Because... My inbox was, <laughs> and I have to say, 98% of these comments were positive and were beautiful. I have to say that because people treated me with so much love. And that's why I yeah. kept um, kept on going because I love how people really appreciated what I was doing. 98% right. of those. It was great, and was I so never fun. knew that was going to blow up like that. I was just doing it for fun because a friend of mine, uh, my friend Mai from uh, Japan, was like, why don't you do all these like stereotypical crew behaviors? And I'm like, you know what? I've always loved doing this and doing comedy. I'm going to give it a try. That's yeah. why I did that, but I never knew it was going to blow up like that. And I was very happy to be able, first of all, to get money with that because it was my own time, my own content, my own creation. And secondly, uh, learning... Right. on how to like edit videos, create my, my own stuff, make my own um, what do you, scripts as well. It was a really, really happy moment right. for me as a content creator. It just became very, very exhausting and it wasn't fun anymore because of how the people wanted me to actually mm -hmm. start behaving. And I'm like, this is not me. This does not represent who I am. This is not my brand. I'm not gonna do that, I'm sorry. But you never know, it may come back. Actually, the other day, I was, where was I? I think I was at my friend's house and I was on a dating app and someone messaged me, oh, there you go, that's Alice. And I was like, oh God, for, <laughs> for fuck's sake, you can, and, it, and he started giving me ideas for new videos. I was like, he, he literally wrote, for I don't know how many things, like this is new in the company. Do, 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 just talk about this. And it was funny, it was funny. I'm like, I may use that in the future, cause. Oh, I think you should. I mean, I think that it just made sense that mm -hmm. you had to step away from it for a little bit because getting like, like you said, it was 98% positive comments, but we right. tend to focus on the negatives as humans, as human beings. And yeah, it can be, it can be really hard and you have a big platform already as it is. Um, and I can understand, and you know, how many times have I told you, you need to make videos, great content. You could be making so much money and you were like, no, I don't want to, but you weren't in the right headspace. And if you're not yeah. in the right and headspace, if, you can't just if create, I want to create content, it. I cannot know? because I'm yeah. banned on Instagram. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have my, like my big profile. <laughs> so now even if True. I want to, uh, but yeah, but I deleted YouTube, right? most of the videos cause they stopped the, um, they stopped the money. 
Yeah, because because I wasn't wanted to say I wasn't uploading, so they right. were like, you know what? Bye. <laughs> it's time for you to go. But all the videos that I did, yes. But you can, can start again. again. It's just take a long time. I'm like, yeah. I was just like, yeah, and you can what repost. should I talk about? I feel like I have nothing to tell the world. That that's the thing. Like I do a lot of things, and I'm an artist, and I do my music and my actings and everything. But I'm like, what like what am I supposed to tell the people? Yeah. But I've always, 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 always admired right. what you do. And I'm so glad that you actually trust me to tell me you should be doing this because you can make a lot of money. But I still, I'm still figuring out how. <laughs> but it will happen someday. It will. Yeah, it will but happen. But it's eventually. part of it. No, and it's part of it. And I think that's why it's important for us to like, it was important for us to have this conversation. We said we were going to do it. We were like kind of waiting. We saw each other in the meantime, like we did meet in Dubai um last oh, year yeah. i think it was um but yeah. um yeah yeah but i think it's important that that yeah that we have this chat because these chats like kind of like give you more ideas and everything like i just started creating aviation related videos and it's been three years since i left but it was if i tell you the truth it was my therapist who told me why are you not creating right. content about this like you've got 10 years of stories under your belt um i literally did a couple of videos and That's i was crazy. featured in newsweek like for like a aviation video yeah so like obviously people are interested and i thought there was just stupid stories that no one wanted to hear um, but apparently people do and yeah, and I think it, but you, I think you, you do have, have to. to be in the right and mindset before though. we I think continue, you do. I mean, it's... I know that we're, yeah. uh, we're going to talk about this in a minute about like the shows and everything, but I was so, so happy yeah. to have you last year to have you in my show, because to me, it was very special. First of all, going back to Dubai, which was the city that I left because I wanted to chase my dreams and to be able to come back to Dubai with an incredible show like that and to have you and the rest of my friends there because you came like twice right you came two or three times there three times i think three times yes. yeah i even it went for my so birthday i celebrated like, my, my birthday my friends there. are here <laughs> and they can see why i left because there was a reason for me to leave the company and dubai as well and for me to, to uh to be able to show it to you guys I was incredibly happy and also i'm very happy because i know how tough it was for you to be fired at the beginning but i knew that you were going to do something incredible and you've grown so much since you've been home you went back to dubai then you went to another place you you moved to bali you created a, lo a lot of stuff you were trying what is best for you and not everybody is brave enough to do that and you know, I know that it sucks sometimes because it sucks for me as well. You know that I'm not going through the best of times, <laughs> but we're still going. Yes, way better. But you're doing but better. But we're still going and we you're and, and we trust in what we do. And even if we don't trust in what we do, we do it and we just believe and hope that it will work out in the future. So I, you, you know, like kudos to you, girl. Kudos to you because I really admire what you're doing and you've grown so much. Like you've Thank literally you. grown so much. <laughs> both personally and professionally i'm sure and you've always been you've always been Thank by my side so always much. like giving yeah. advice yeah. you're a good friend and i wanted to say that because people think that uh people when they do all these collabs so just like you. for front or whatever no like <laughs> this is real like this is real we talk on a daily basis and we actually have a friendship and we share and that's why we, we wanted do. to do this because we want people to know how it really is once you leave the company and once you start believing in your own vision right that's 100 percent right i'm so glad you said I all of that it, and baby. thank you so much <laughs> because it's true i mean no, i love you you know um and it's like i think it's I, you know like after i was fired as you know you know my whole story but for the people who don't know um i lost friends that were like family to me um, and you were one of the few people that was still by my side, even though I was going through depression, anxiety, I had no idea what was going to happen with my life. And you were always there. And I totally appreciate that because I honestly saw the people that were closest to me leaving me stranded, you know, like it was just like they didn't give a crap. But they were like, bye, girl, like, you know, you're leaving. And the worst part is that they didn't lose their job. Yeah, they were still working. Um, but they just decided that, you know, they didn't want to support me in that journey, which was difficult. But, you know, after you're at the top, everyone right. like kind of like, starts well, reaching that's out. That's so, so true. <laughs> Listen, that's so true. 
I've had messages of people being like, oh, you know, once they see you yes. doing good. And I'm like, I was going to ask. Whatever. Like, I'm not even going to answer that. Like, whatever. Yeah. It sucks. But yeah, because, yeah, you know, once you. <laughs> once you keep going, like the real ones will stick to you because they because they are there for a reason. It's, it's just not for yeah. posture. Oh, no, I love. No, no, no. I love you. And if I say I love you, I do. And that's why I'm here. I want to talk um, about the different things that happen the after Emirates life. Um, and we actually had um, a really random person commenting yesterday on one God. of my Bali videos who gave you, us like... But it's funny because <laughs> at the very beginning, we were both idea. agreeing to what she was saying. I was like, okay, she sounds, you know, this is, this is fair. As we kept on yeah. reading, we were like, oh, girl, you're yeah. so lost yeah. in life. Like, you don't even know. You're off, far, like, miles away from the message that we're trying to send here. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, I I feel like there's what, what I've encountered with YouTube. I don't know if this has happened to you, but, like, what I, and with social media in general after going viral a couple of times is that people, some people, for some reason, sometimes think that I'm American. And because they think I'm American, they give me a lot of crap. Um, they tell, they, they talk shit about my accent, about my country. And just so everyone knows, I'm not from America. I you did live there, right? like Jersey. spend a big chunk of my life there, but it, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I went to high school there, um, but I'm, I'm from Uruguay. I'm, I'm from Latin America. Latina, I'm 100% Latin got American. That La I she's drink got that Latina mate. flavor in her. She's not American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but people give me so much crap for like because they think I'm American. Um, and I feel like it's uh, that's the number one thing. That's the first thing why people attack me. And then now the second thing has become because because like of the cabin crew themed uh, like aviation themed videos. Um, I feel like a lot like you say, 99% mm -hmm. of people like them, but there's one percent there who always has something to say. So I know you experienced this. Um, and I was a hater before, and I always say this, I was a hater before I left Emirates because I wanted an out and I just didn't know how to leave. Um, and the only ex flight attendant, ex cabin crew videos I would watch would be yours because those weren't triggering to me. They were fun. Uh, but then anyone else's i'd be so triggered Why, and though? i would be kind of like not doing or saying Why? anything but inside hating them because what i would say like outside i'd be like what are these people talking like what do you know you know you're not here anymore yeah. go to hell you know that's what i was saying out loud and then inside i was like Fuck, i'm so frustrated because i can't talk i can't even use my social media mm -hmm. normally because i would get fired you know or in trouble and i i would love to do the communication and this type of thing has always been my thing and i would love to do it but i can't because emirates won't let me so i felt a lot of hate um but now being on the other side i'm like i understand the people who are a bit hateful but at the same time Thank i'm like you. It is very hard to talk about your Emirates experience without being a bit hateful. Like, you need to talk both positive and negative. Uh -huh. Like, that's something that's unavoidable. Like, you need to talk both sides because it's not, like, it's not, um, it's not beautiful all the time. Of course it's not. And there are things that you like that other people it's don't not. and the other way around. So, whatever you say... People are always going to have an opinion. Right. But the thing is, there's a difference between attacking someone right. and just reading whatever they, uh, they're saying and going on with your life because you don't have to attack no one. So, but when right. you're talking about Emirates, it doesn't matter if you're in the company right. or not. And I think the like social media uh, policies have changed over the years. They have to because, you know. They have. They actually is, let their crew crazy. post stuff. But when you they talk do. about Emirates, and Dubai and whatever, your experience, nobody has to have an opinion about it. I mean, they do because obviously you expose yourself, but whatever you say needs to be respected because it's your opinion, it's your life, and that's how you experience that, how you went through those experiences or whatever. It's yours. Nobody can take that away from you. But people always have something to say. It used to uh, piss me off to see people talking shit about me. Then I started ignoring everyone, and these days whatever i post i'm like 
I don't care about the outcome. I, I'm just sure about this content and it's going to go out. And whatever you say is your problem, not mine. And I'm literally ignoring everyone. And you know me. I used to have like a lot of temper and everything. Not anymore. I'm like, whatever you say, you want to say that. Okay, that that's great. That's your opinion. My thoughts are different. So bye bye. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I have no issue with people telling me their opinion or their experience. At the contrary, I love to hear that. But when it, yeah. it comes from a place of like attacking someone else, I'm like, why? Like, you know, your experience isn't the same as mine. I have friends who never had issues in the time they were with Emirates. And for me, I was unlucky mm -hmm. enough yeah. to have crazy people on flights, situations that took me to a um, disciplinary hearing. You know, like I've, I've had situations like that because I was unlucky. I was on those Fire. flights. I've had deaths yeah. on board i've had everything <laughs> firing getting people fired and do you know the rest of the people shouldn't say anything about it like w when i hear people talk about emirates i listen to whatever they have to say and i don't say nothing at all because that's your opinion different yeah. thing will be if you tell me oh they uh they don't allow you like something that is a fact and you are actually uh denying that then I i'll be like well that's a lie but that's not my opinion or yours this is just a lie Right. You're just a lion. Taking a tiny break now, just to remind you that if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want, you can leave a comment and tell me what you'd like to see more of. And I'll be more than happy to create that type of content for you. All right, let's continue. And tell me something. How was your experience like after? Because for you, it was mm -hmm. it, we were in different places because you resigned and you resigned pursuing yeah. this vision, this dream that you had, and you were able to achieve a huge part of it, which is amazing. I always tell you, um, but then um, how was your life afterwards? How did you feel? How were the first few weeks? The day I sent my resignation after. letter, I was actually ready to do it. Once I sent it, I pressed send, I started crying because I'm like, <gasps> it's real, it's gonna happen. I was happy because wow. I was like, you know, I'm ready. I am so ready to actually go on this adventure and, you know, fight for my dreams and everything. But I was sad because I'm like almost five years of my life with people who became family who are still a uh, part of my life. I've flown to 50 countries. I come from a very humble family. I've never had anything. And to be able to do all those things and to be able to become independent, to learn, to grow, that was beautiful of course i had downfalls like everybody else had but in general the experience that i had right cannot be compared to anything else in this world so when i sent that letter i was just like oh, i made it real i'm saying no to a, a permanent job to a salary to flying everywhere to i'm saying i'm saying no to stability, stability. To fight for my dreams yeah but once i left the company i'm like i don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. But I was actually calm because I had money. Unfortunately, money rules most of the things that I need right now. So I was happy because I had money and I had time. And mm -hmm. I was like, I don't have to worry about having a job. I don't have to worry about um, nothing. I have this and now I can live and do nothing. It was tough because my body needed to adjust to regular life. So for the first month, I couldn't sleep because my body was just... And yes, I couldn't sleep for like a month, really? even more, I would say. Then my stomach was actually adapting again, so wow. everything was sitting bad on me. I couldn't take food. It, it was bad. I, I went through different processes, wow. and I'm like, is this normal? But then my friend Ellie told me that she actually went through the same thing. But like afterwards you got to go back to dubai you got offers like how was that and how and what happened with the whole allison thing like you yes. got you were making money from that too like on top of the content that you were putting out brands how was were the whole actually thing? texting me they were like oh we love your allison videos and i think that because yes dubai brands because they were like brands? we're gonna work like we work with a lot of crew and a lot of like um cabin crew discounts and we are interested in like investing on your videos I was in Spain, yeah. And you were in they Spain, were by the way. A lot of money for a one minute to two minutes <laughs> video. They were paying a lot of money. I got a lot of money with Allison. Then people were uh, requesting birthday wishes or just saying hello, all these kind of things. And I was charging a lot of money. <laughs> and they were paying, you know, Dubai, yes, a lot of work. Good. It's a lot of so work. So I was getting a lot of money. But as I told you, when people were, um, became so demanding i'm like i'm gonna stop this because i'm not actually happy with what i'm doing or the way i'm doing it, it it's way too forced and i don't like to force things i like to right. be natural and that's who i am that that's my nature so i'll stop that 
but okay. during uh after quarantine and i had to you know get money and i was a teacher i was also working in caterings like as a waiter and stuff like that and it was tough but one day and this is real this is 100 real i can bring my friend in here and she will tell you i was doing the dishes at a wedding and i was carrying some stuff and i said oh my god i'm so done with this like i love this because it's fun i'm working with my friends but i need something else i need to grow because i feel like i'm stuck i kid you not 30 minutes after i said that i go on instagram because i was checking on on my break and i see this dm by um from my boss in dubai edwin you met him and it was like hey there uh, there is a friend of yours who talked to me about yeah. you we need an mc for this new show in dubai and i thought it was a lie i was like okay whatever what I messaged him. I'm like, okay, I'm interested. Just let me know about the conditions and how can we do that, or every, just just give me details, you know, because I didn't know anything about it. And he called me, so I knew it was real. When they told me all the like, all the benefits, the conditions, I'm like, no way. So you're telling me I was doing the dishes and I was about to give up, and I said I cannot put up with this anymore. And now you're giving me this opportunity, and I'm telling you the person who gave me this opportunity didn't know me in person that could have gone so wrong but he was like because of the way your friend talked to me about about you we know it's you the one we need in here so i was like i cannot believe that i'm actually get to go back to dubai you were like i'm coming back and i told you that like you're literally coming back to the place where you left for the reason that you left getting paid a lot of money having that stability that is so much needed especially when you're an yes. artist like yourself like it's it was full like circle. like you and said also, full circle that I was, was amazing and the show was really cool come to terms with dubai you know how i left and I, but i came to terms and i was at peace with dubai i was like okay i know yeah. that this is not the place that i love but i feel like dubai is home it feels like home i have my people there i know how i know right. my way i know my way it is. around the it city does. and i know how to how to do things there so it feels comfortable. But to me, that was one of the most right. special things that happened in my life, which was going back to Dubai to host such a show, which turned out to be a bit yeah. weird with the company and stuff. But my colleagues, my experience, that was incredible. And I will I would never change because that gave me the opportunity to actually go to a different show in London. And then I moved to London. But now that you're in a better place, if you had the chance, if you got like a really cool definitely, proposition yeah. like this, would you go? I, I was actually thinking about it. I'm would like, you do it? I was telling my friend Manu, well, my friend, anyway. Um, I was like, uh, I think I'm ready to go back to a show there because you may or may not love Dubai, but they value artists because we've seen that. And they pay, you a, they pay you a lot of money. I love Dubai. I, I know will you say do. It. I, I know you it. do. <laughs> they pay you a lot of money. They pay you a lot of money. Conditions are normally great. So you feel yeah. valued. In Spain, I love my country, but as an artist, I've got serious doubts about it because it's really hard. Like That's you don't hard. get paid enough. You don't get paid what you're worth. Nothing like that. So if I had the opportunity to go back to Dubai, I would definitely go. But it will be like a seasonal stuff, like do three or six months, leave and then come back again. I would do that because I need to be away from Dubai after some time. Why are people so interested in aviation? You know, I find like people are yes, so interested. Do you find that too? People are not planning on becoming a flight attendant or whatever. People just love that. There's something about the cabin yeah. crew life or the life. I don't know what is it, but people love to see those videos. That's why I'm so curious about people who actually, it's funny. People who attack you on YouTube have no clue about aviation. People who actually were flight attendants normally would agree with everything. That, that happened to Allison. Most of the uh, people who actually loved and agree with yeah. everything I said were a cabin crew, either for Emirates, American Airlines, uh, British Airways, whatever, you, you name it. But people just love that. There's something about that life or that lifestyle they see on TV or on social media they just want to know i mean they, they also have a really good like marketing teams and you know like like, like the uniforms the hats the the runways it, it feels like a yeah. runway when you go on an airport if it's just like a like a ballroom runway it's just like girl bring it to the runway i loved it people asking you for photos it was i felt like it was the closest thing i remember once i flew with this with this girl and she was like 
she was in first class. She had been in Emirates for like a while. And I was, I was still in business, working in business class. And she was like, look, um, this is the closest we'll ever get <laughs> to celebrity life. She's like, because True. think about it. She's like, and I was like, and that stuck with me. I was like 23 or so. And that stuck with me because she's like, look, like we, we go back it then. Changed. Now it's not like that anymore but with Emirates she's like we go to it changed a lot we go to five star hotels we stay there in the best places she's like we get to she, yeah and she's like we get money to spend yeah. there we're in Paris and, and then the next day we're in like New York and you know and it's amazing and she's like this is the closest we'll ever get to be a celebrity people want photos to, to take photos crazy. with us they you know compliment us like um, it's insane. And that gets, I think that messes with your mind though, because once, and I realized after I lost the job, because once I lost it, right. Once I lost that and I lost like, you know, the crew, even cause after you, when you become a supervisor as well, like people are always looking at you and they're like complimenting you. And like, I'm not even saying like how you look or anything, just complimenting like, Oh, you're so fun. You're so this, you're so that. And from one day to the next, you lose it. Right. No one's telling you Your you're great anymore. So it's like, it's an ego fight, like an ego battle. So. Always. It always is an ego battle. But it's good to actually, it's always. good to have that ego, but also remember yeah. who you are and where you come from. And I think that was key, at least for you and me, because we know, because yeah. I know you and my friends, we have that kind of like spark about we know who we are and what we're doing. But at the same time, we remember our roots, we remember our people, and we still, you know, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm from we, a very humble family. I'm from like a my families are working class. You know, I I, I literally came yeah, from you the, are the bottom and you know worked my, my way name. up. Respect and back on my name, but we do that. It's just like yes, uh, celebrity <laughs> yeah. life. It just feels like I don't know why, but people on on the plane they they look at you like wow, and you just like girl, I just want to go to bed because it's three a.m. and I'm flying they to do. Birmingham and I don't feel like being on this plane. But you look at me like. Oh, wow you look incredible and some people just have that light you know i i used to see some crew that i'm like wow you look impeccable yeah like you look great just standing there yeah but i think it's the energy i think it's about the energy because that happened a lot with you on board like you had this energy about you that everyone was talking with you everyone was joking with you you know and i think that's something that has nothing to do with the job it's has to nothing you. to yeah. do with the uniform I remember when Emirates yeah. used to tell us, guys, just be yourselves on yeah. board. And I was like, are you sure you want me to be myself on board? Because if you want me to be myself on board, um, we may get in trouble. Not, yeah, not because I'm dangerous, but it's because, on. you know, I like to be professional, <laughs> but I like to have fun. You know me. I like to keep it professional, but I think there are ways to do it professionally yeah. and also having fun, which was not allowed on Emirates. But if you want me to be myself, are you sure about those words? Because no. you may... No. You may want to, you know, just uh, bring it down a notch and be just like, okay, yeah. be yourself, uh, but be also uh, wise about what you do. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. No. Yeah. And I, I flew sure. with you. We flew together. Last flight we did together. We flew together for a week, and we so ended happy. up like not talking at one point of the flight, and then we ended up so like happy. being friends. Again. Was that was that before <laughs> that was my leave? Or I think it was before my leave. <laughs> right after before my leave, and the first because we were doing a multi sector, and on the first flight, my cabin bag broke. Yes, and I had no. It was Milan, like New York. <laughs> my cabin bag broke, and I have to carry <laughs> that cabin bag for five days. So heavy because I had literally everything. We ate so much. Oh my god! In Milan, when we went, I still have the oh photos and the GoPro videos. Us in like the Duomo, like you know, like hanging out, having apple it was a, it, spritz. It was a fun trip. It was a <laughs> fun trip. Would That's you go a back? Very to interesting question, Veronica. For Emirates, maybe. Or for Emirates. It was funny because I remember when you got the uh, the email <laughs> to rejoin the company, I actually told you to send me the email and I actually asked them to rejoin. And they told me, just get <laughs> just get a hair comb and comb your hair backwards. That's what you said. <laughs> Basically, I was, it was, yeah, it was just profound. I'm like, Beto, just send me the link. I'll just apply again. And they, uh, they told me, uh, no. <laughs> they told me, uh, no. And they were like, but no. The thing is, when I left Emirates, my idea was to fly back in Spain. But I didn't have the license because you need a license in here, even apart from the training. So my idea was to go back to flying. But there was a problem when we were okay. doing the course to actually fly. And I didn't get my license. So I'm like, you know what? That was life telling uh -huh. me to actually do my thing. 
and for some time i was like okay maybe going back to flying yeah. will be a good idea so i was looking for companies that didn't uh, require that uh license and it was only like their training and you go back to flying never got that option then i thought about going on private but they don't get guys i'm like but i'm a drag queen don't you want a drag queen on the plane they were like no, no. <laughs> I imagine. Girl, but Allison nah. is waiting for, for the <laughs> there, there millionaires. Are a, cop, uh, a couple of <laughs> private airlines that actually hire guys, but I never got to apply for, for them or whatever. And okay. after going through a rough time this year, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And I was in Sevilla yeah. not long ago, city that I love, by the way. And uh, a friend of my friend, Marga, you know Marga. So one of, one of his friends, one of her friends, sorry, who works yeah. for EasyJet with a base in Palma, which is where I'm, where I'm from, was like, oh, conditions are great. This is how we work. This, 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 blah, blah, blah. And I was like, should I apply for EasyJet? I'm like, because I've I flown with them a lot of times and I actually like them. So I'm like, you know what? Just let me know when they open the base because I actually want to go to base in Malaga. But Palma is fine because I'm from there and I know my way there. So it's, it's totally good. And I was, yeah. And that was by the beach. And I, and I told Malaga, oh, I told Malaga, I, I told Malaga, <laughs> I told Malaga, I'm actually <laughs> going to apply for EasyJet. And I did apply for EasyJet. You know, like these things that you do at home when you're bored? Oh, yeah, a, application form, whatever. I get an email the day after. Yeah. Okay, congratulations. Now we're going to send you tests. And I'm like, okay, that escalated quickly. So I was doing all the tests and everything. And after weeks, <laughs> they messaged me again. Okay, so you have your final interview on Monday. And I was like, what so last monday not this monday but the but the previous one i did my interview and i got a job for easyjet so guess who's gonna go back to flying that's rushy rush baby thing is i'm gonna work really hard for me to be able to have something stable related to what i want to do by march if i don't have that then i will happily go back to flying but my idea is to not go back to flying but i'm thankful that i have this opportunity in case i have nothing that i have to um, that I have like secure, I will I will do that. Or if I have to miss one gig, but once I start flying, I can book more gigs, then it's fine as well. You know what I mean? Because they will pay me good money, but if I can get one month's salary and then right. just do more money with different gigs, it's weird. My, my brain right now is just like, it's in March, forget about that. Just go through all the process and just do the, uh, the, the paperwork things and stuff, and we'll see by March, because exactly. I don't want to stress. I don't want to stress, it's like, like five months it's so far away no and you shouldn't stress but i think it's great that you have yeah. like that little push like i said before to do what you want to do as an artist and then like if it gets to the time and you know you have to go back to flying for a few months then you do and then you can always get off like that's the thing it's not it's not a prison it's right not like a sentence you can go back to your old life you know it's okay if it's gonna make you feel better to have that money to have that stability you should do it um but i think we maybe what's happening to you and i'm just i don't know this is what i feel that could be the case because it could be the case for me too is that after flying for emirates for so long it kind of felt like a prison in the best sense um because you're like you have you have this stability you have this you have a place to live you live in a great place in a great city um and then you're you know you you don't have like it's like do i leave so you kind of feel like you're imprisoned because you don't want to leave you don't want to give up that opportunity so it does kind of feel that way so I'm maybe like, that's yeah, what's happening to you you know to flying and deal with customers and now because you know that it ha it it happened to oh, me a couple of times that I was working at weddings, you know, being a waiter, and I've had guests on that wedding being like, "Oh, you're Rush your Rush baby," or "Oh, you gave a concert yesterday." Yes, that's why I'm like, if Seriously? I go back to fine, I'm gonna have people saying, "Oh, I know you." That's the ego, like that's my ego talking, which is unavoid. Like, it is what it is. There's nothing but what's wrong, wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with think, that. And I think that I'm a star, which I am. Being on the, on the plane again is just like, oh, God, I just want to be an artist. But I, I know it's hard. And, you know, I have nothing against going back to flying. You know, I I've uh, cleaned toilets. I've been a waiter. I've worked literally everywhere. No problem with that. I'll do dishes. If I get money, I'll serve you drinks. I don't give a shit. No issues. I just need my money, too, for specific uh, purposes. Yeah. 
what stuff's travel like in easy yeah, jet what, I know, do you already know what it's gonna look like because i have a friend who's no a you get you get benefits for your friends as well your podcast. family and everything yes okay. you do you oh, do really? and also Yay! i i heard through the grapevine <laughs> and through people who work for easy jet they're going to start with my id travel which we had on emirates and you had yeah. access to a lot of companies so if they do that, right, we did. Oh, that's incredible. I, I don't, I don't oh, think, do. or I don't know if Emirates is included on that, but I think they're going to open more airlines. And also, you know, back in Europe, you can fly for free. If you go to like a different airline, like Iberia, I and I go is. there, hey, I fly for EasyJet, I'm Spanish, have the license. They, they, they're going to get you for free, even if you don't have my ID travel. You're not going to have any problems. Europe is not the UAE for that, you know, that's but really cool. yeah. They have benefits. You have uh, staff yeah, travel. You true. have benefits with like the friends and direct uh, family members as well, which is great. I will be able to like take my mom or my brothers or my husband or whoever. So I think uh, Emirates is on my ID travel uh, because the other yeah. guys on the other airlines were able to book. And actually, they used to be able to book in business class to travel in business class when I first joined. And we were able to book business class in Air France and business whatever for like good. next to nothing. Yeah, they, they just basically were allowed and uh, someone complained. They were like, wait, why are we able to travel business class, right? And that's why the benefits were removed and they weren't able to travel business class. That's and crazy. neither were we. So it was so great. I, I will... I would love to know who that idiot There's was. There's always that one that idiot. That I flew just... uh, business class, I think, two or three times. <laughs> one time was coming, going to San Fran because they needed a crew. And they sent me to all the way to San Fran in business class on Emirates. And then the second time, was, oh, that New York that I was, it, was That's it beautiful. that New York? Because I met you in New York once. You were sick. Remember? I went the I next day that. because I was really, really sick and they wanted to leave me on ground and it was actually their responsibility yep. because it was me and four other crew from my flight all in my galley we all got sick she from was very food sick. poisoning from Still, their own food we went to see aladdin no complaints were made we paid 200 dollars for those seats i will <laughs> never regret that it was the time of my life even though after that she had to run to the toilet because she was sick like for was real but we were like we're just gonna go like we need to see this play and we need to see this musical and we're gonna do it together we did this did we spent a lot of money we did but we had the money and that was the we time did. to do those things we did that was the time we went on our magic carpet ride yeah. and it was amazing i don't regret yeah. it for oh, a second because i remember uh <laughs> they, they started aladdin here in spain in madrid and i was like oh did you watch it i was like ah, oh, i saw it on broadway with my friend i remember i had my manager calling me who was who has a reputation in memories because she was slapping people and stuff but she we're was, not going to mention her but she yeah, was she famous if you were emirates and you mentioned manager and slapping someone you know her name and you know the whole story we don't we, we don't have to go over she got she, she was like go oh, yeah, she, was. she was fire though yeah, I don't know if it was in 2020 Man, or that, if it was that before. Story. I think it was in that story and i just yeah. love all the stories on emirates the worst yeah, part is that insane. she was insane but it was her i flew with her brother so many times and he was the nicest guy he was also a supervisor and i remember telling him like i'm sorry i am gonna tell you this like you're i get along with your sister she's my manager but she's the weirdest person i feel like she was very like envious and jealous of like the girls who work there like i have no idea. i got along with her but there was a spanish uh, csv i don't know if you remember her so she, many. she used to do witchcraft she was a witch like witchcraft I think I know who you're talking about. No, I think I we, we've talking talked about, about her, her actually. Like, we've talked I love about her. Because she loves yes. me. Yes. She loves me. And I'm like, wow. Yes, I remember her. Okay. Yo, so she, she used to used sacrifice, sacrifice chickens. chickens and... But was she, do, do you remember <laughs> on the plane, we used to have the like the Polaroid camera and we used to go around taking pictures with the kids. So what she did was telling this great tool, the, the one who works yeah. in the economy, you grab the safety demo go around the cabin and take pictures with the kid so she was taking like aircraft equipment yeah because she wanted the, the, the kids to wear like the life jacket yes so she told the her to take <laughs> aircraft equipment to go around the cabin and what? tell people i couldn't stop laughing ali and myself would love that story we used to tell this story to literally everyone 
So she would go around with the, uh, with the grade two, just taking pictures with the kids and the life jacket and, and the seat belt and the, and the safety car, or whatever. And just like, man, you're just done. Like you're crazy. And I remember so many stories from her. She loved to report people. She loved it, but she loved me. So I, I was happy with that. I flew with her to Barcelona, I remember, and she reported like two different people on my flight and she liked me. I had no issues with her, but I think it was because I'm also a Spanish speaker, you know, and like everything was chilled. But I mean, man, she's crazy. Like, I I remember one of my best friends. uh, No, she went back. She she, uh, she was fired because, oh, my God, I didn't tell you this story because of a PA she made on board. It was that crazy. (laughs) No, I think I think you did. Wait, what what PA did she do? Wait, wait, wait because oh, either you told it me or someone told flight. me because this sounds familiar. Someone's no, mauled, yes, I know. Some, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. It was someone something political, on, something on the toilet, in the yes. toilet, and she grabbed she grabbed the interphone and she was just like, yes, 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 who yes, the yes. fuck smoked in <laughs> whatever, like really bad in Spanish, and they were like, a, you know, like Madrid flight was <laughs> always full of crew. <laughs> Someone reported her, and she was downgraded to grade one. She couldn't yeah, take like, it, yeah. and then I think she left or was fired. And now, at least, last thing I know is that she was flying in the Spanish airline, and people were talking shit about her. Yes, people no, were talking flying. shit about her in that <laughs> Spanish airline that I'm not going to mention. But she went back to flying back home. Yeah, and also an, another story. I cannot say any names, but one of my friends. Uh, I have two friends that look alike. Okay but they are not the same person. So one of my friends, she actually kissed her ex-boyfriend, right? She got furious when she found out about it. She goes into the briefing room and one of my friends, not the one who did that, a different one who looks like that, was flying with her. She went nuts. She said, oh my God, I knew that you're a bitch. It's you. She is a CSV, okay? She is in the briefing room. So I know in Spanish, it was you. You're a bitch. You did that. My friend was telling me the story and she's like, man, I didn't know what she was talking about. I actually had to ask her like, but who are you talking about? She was like, yeah, it's you, bitch. It's you. And she had no clue when she told me that I couldn't stop laughing because they look alike. But I would have never thought she was going to do that. She did. You know, like, now that you mentioned this, like, there's a huge thing with looking like other people and looking like celebrities and stuff on board. Like, did you get confused? Like, there's one person who's who I'm friends with. We look alike and everyone thinks I'm her. And, really? or like, and even until now, she flies with different people and they're like, you look just like this girl yeah. I know. Well, and she's that happened, like, that happened yeah, to yeah, Ale a lot. Know, she's my friend. They were comparing but Ale to myself all the time man. because we actually, you know, after a while being together, yeah, always, not because we look alike, to but you? we behave yeah. very similarly. So they're always like, oh, you, re- you remind me of this person. Like, Same yeah, Pedro, energy. right? Okay. <laughs> is he still he having is, a good man. time he flying? Just, he's a very, very simple and easygoing person. He just goes, does what, uh, whatever he has to do. He goes uh, flying here and there. But um, yeah, because you know how much he loves Asia and how loves it. So he's been going there on leave and days off. And I'm like, um, we are waiting for you. So it's your mom. <laughs> I miss going to Asia every Freaking like. I miss going to Thailand and Taipei. And oh, Thailand. <gasps> really? Oh, I never went to Taipei. For me, my top never three went. were like uh, Bangkok, no. Hong Kong, and Taipei. Those three destinations were like my favorite ones. Never went to Hong Kong. You couldn't Kong do it because either. of your uh, passport. <laughs> You know why? I couldn't for the first, I think for like the first seven years or so, I couldn't because of my passport, but not because of my passport. I can go to Hong Kong. Like if I went on days off, I could have gone. But the thing is that because by nationality, there weren't okay. that many people. There were very few of us. Um, Emirates had to pay for each nationality and they didn't pay for, for ours. And then like that, the... Hong Kong government removed that and then we were able to go but then by then I was like you yeah. know there were like new destinations open and top bid I would always ask for oh my god Rio, the flight to Rio you know. let's not talk about so the flight to Rio yeah, I, I love the destination but let's not talk about the passenger profile <laughs> let's not talk about the, let's not talk about it horrible horrible and 
they weren't my people, but they were, they're close and to my I country. And now I'm not talking about the Brazilians. Like, I don't like generalizing, but, and I'll always talk to Argentinians and I'm like, guys, I'm telling you, Madrid flight can be a pain in the ass because, you know, Spanish people with money are the worst. But when you go to Buenos Aires, but I have to say, I love the city. And now it's great. The food, and the layover is great. The food is great. But remember, like, when I used to, but, like, I had a bit of a mix. Like, I had great people. And I think it's oh, because yes. I know how to handle them, too. So it was, like, easier for me. But I remember I used to, when we had the flags, I used to remove the flag so they wouldn't see where I was from because I was, like, and, and I would, I would refuse to speak Spanish because I was, like, they're just, they won't stop, you know? But, it, it got, and then, like, it happened more than once where they would like start singing songs because it was like groups and go like, uh, 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 like I'm to not, me. I'm not the know? bitch and, and today's was, not the day, so baby. Weird. No, <laughs> no way. But I remember I had, the, there was, there was one time there was this guy who was being super nasty to this, this guy who was from China, but he lived in uh, Argentina for the longest time. And he was oh, being God. super racist and like being completely out of place. And they thought I didn't speak Spanish. And then all of a sudden I went off and were, he was like, wait, you speak Spanish? And I was like, yeah. And you're being disrespectful and you're being disgusting. And he was like, oh. and then, yes. you know, like, so I love yes. doing that to people. I love doing that to people a lot. Yeah, like they, they didn't best, know you spoke the uh, best Spanish feeling and ever. just going like... Well, and the worst like, feeling ever is when you are talking shit about someone in your language thinking they don't know it and they answer in your language. That happened to me as well. But why do Spanish speakers I don't know. feel like no one speaks Spanish? Yes, I think it's like the third most spoken times. language in the world. Like, that happened to me. <laughs> I'm a, I ha my mouth is yeah. nasty and I just talk, not in a bad way, I just talk about everything. And sometimes I have people like, oh, are you Spanish? I'm like, mm, I actually yeah. am. What a coincidence. You learned the lesson. All right. Thank you thank so much you. for being here Beto, today. Thank yes, you so much for having thank me. You I'm so much literally for being so happy. Today. We talked for like <laughs> one hour and a half and I'm just happy. I'm always happy to have, uh, to have a conversation <laughs> with you. Always. Same. Next one is going to be live because I will be in Europe yes. in a few months. So we're going to meet up and oh we're going to record oh, a to make live that one in person. We will. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for joining today. Um, I'll leave here. We were probably going to leave it as well when I edit um, Pedro's social media so you can follow him. Um, Thank and, you guys. Yeah. Bye bye. That's it. Thank you. See you next time.